I got to thinking about that phrase, happy holidays. You see it on a lot of cards and stuff like that and, and uh, season's greetings and, and, and what have you. And, and just the other day, in fact, when we did this, the caroling, we gave out cards to people. And when we bought the cards, I didn't realize when you opened it up, it said something along the lines of season's greetings or something. I'm like, ah. And so uh, you might not think that's a big deal. What's wrong with happy holidays? That was the original title. What's wrong with happy holidays? And I was, I was just uh, thinking through this phrase and what all holidays are going on this time of year and so uh, the title of the message is happy holy days happy holy days and really there's two extremes you know that this as well as i do i'm sure christmas time comes around and uh, maybe if you're on social media or whatever you got two extremes you got people saying oh it's wicked you know just stay away from any kind of christmas or any kind of of these holidays and then you got others you know, that just embrace it and whatever, you know, they, they'll, they'll embrace all the festivities and what have you. And I'm probably not going to break, break it down as much as maybe somebody would like as far as calling certain things out or something. Uh, but one thing I think is obvious is that we don't need, uh, number one, to just embrace everything out there that the world celebrates as a holy day or, or a holiday. <clears throat> At the same time, uh, I want to talk a little bit about some of the liberties that we do have. And so the passage that he just read there, great passage. I'll also turn to uh, uh, Rome, uh, Colossians chapter 2. I'm going to read that verse, uh, part of that verse in Romans again, and then we'll go to Colossians chapter 2. But in Romans 14 it said, uh, let me see here. <clears throat> Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not uh, eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Who art thou that judge another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand." One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Really, that's, that's key to so much what we as Baptists hold on to as standards and convictions, however you want to define that, whatever. So much of it is this. Do what your conscience says is right before God. You know what I mean? I, I, I mean, it's based on the Holy Spirit, not just like, I feel like this is a good idea. But if your conscience is clear before God, I don't see a problem with doing this, and somebody else is calling you out for it, listen to them, consider if what they're saying is right or wrong, and then if you feel like you're right before God, you know, that's, that's, that's your deal. But we got to be careful not to get to the point, uh, and I'm getting way ahead of myself, but we got to be careful not to get to the point where everyone that does something different than us, as far as what they celebrate or what their standards are or something like that, is not just treated like, you know, scum. So here, uh, uh, Colossians chapter 2. So I just re read a little bit of Romans again. Colossians chapter 2, look at verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day. I don't think I have to tell you... Holiday comes from holy day. It's the exact same thing, right? That's where holiday is. Uh, that's just a, this is an older way of saying holy day. It's a day that is holy or sanctified, set apart. You know, it's a special day. And it says, uh, have not, uh, uh, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So here you have in, in uh, Colossians, he's saying, look, if you read this whole context here, he's saying, you need to be strong in the faith. You need to be grounded, mature. You know what you believe. You know why you believe it. And you need to uh, uh, just you stand firm on those kinds of things. And don't be persuaded because someone else comes along and says, you know, uh, you know, well, you should be you shouldn't be worshiping on Sundays. You should be worshiping on Saturdays or they come about, you know, you'll hear all kinds of stuff out there. And the thing is, be strong in your faith and understand, be grounded and realize that, hey, those things were fulfilled. All those laws regarding meats, drinks, 
holy days, Sabbath days, those things have been fulfilled, right? And I don't, I'm not going to take the time to preach on how the Sabbath was fulfilled and all that. But as Christians, according to Colossians here, the, the idea is that you need to be grounded, well-established in believing that. And don't be deceived. Let somebody else come tell you, hey, this is the way you got to believe, okay? Particularly those uh, traditions or Old Testament laws that they begin forcing on you, that would be a bad deal, okay, at that point. Now, the opposite in uh, Romans 14, we see kind of the opposite. It's saying, okay, so you're strong, grounded in the faith. You know what you believe. Now, let's not just jump on everybody who believes differently than you, and let's not force them to believe the same thing you do, okay? And, uh, and so not to judge them that are weak in the faith. Now, it's, 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 it's kind of interesting. You know, my whole life, I've heard, uh, you know, I've, I've had two different extremes on standards, right? Particularly, I'll say, when it comes to music standards and dress standards. You know, I went to do two different colleges that had slightly different philosophies on that and uh, been around a lot of different people. Some people didn't see anything wrong with women wearing pants. Others thought, man, if they wore, you know, pants, they're of the devil, get them out of here. And, uh, and you got to decide, like, man, where, you know, where do I line up on this, right? So uh, it can, you can jump to different extremes, but here's what you need to do. Be convinced in your mind that what you're doing for yourself and what you're doing with your family, you're right before God. Now, sometimes in, in the process of growing, we'll start a adding some standards that we didn't have before. And here's the interesting thing. Sometimes we do that, and it's like all of a sudden we pick up this new thing, Right, that we didn't used to believe that way. And then all of a sudden, if someone else is believing the way we used to believe, <laughs> we're like, that heretic, you know, how could they do that? That's a disgusting person. And so actually, on this topic of holidays, celebrating Christmas, like most people, I, I've only met a few people in my life, independent fundamental Baptists, that were like, no Christmas. I mean, bah humbug. It's bad. And I remember thinking, that's the weirdest thing, because I grew up, it's a Christian holiday, you know, it's a, it's, it's family time. It's fun. It's friendly. And I remember thinking it was all good. And then somebody would say, man, Christmas trees are pagan and they're of the devil. And actually, uh, James Knox, I think is, I think he's the pastor that I was listening to one time and he was going off on Christmas. He, he doesn't like Christmas. Okay. And so he was really preaching against it, but he, but he said this, and this is what I respected about that, that part of the message. He said, but he said, here, here's something that he's observed in the ministry. Because he's the pastor and he's strong on those convictions and he's preached it for so long, naturally, the majority of his congregation follows suit. And they don't have trees, don't decorate with Santa Claus and stuff like that, which I'm against decorating with Santa Claus too, but that's just <laughs> that's another issue. And uh, so, uh, so he said, but what would happen is he would get people that have been independent fundamental Baptists, King James, Bible believing for many, many years. They would come sit under his preaching and like in a month, they'd be like, man, he's right. I need to get rid of the Christmas tree. I need to get all that. And then all of a sudden, they'd have a friend who's got a Christmas tree. And it's like, how could you be so pagan and all this? And he's like, think about it. A week ago, you were right there. You didn't feel like you were pagan, <laughs> right? So the idea is you got somebody who is weaker in the faith, right? Now, we, that, that could mean different things, different people. Weaker in the faith, and, uh, and you just don't know. It could go either way, really. You could have somebody who is saying, you know, I just think that it's pagan and it's wicked. And you could just jump on them for having that belief, right? And it could, it could go either way. So you have to allow some liberty. In other words, what I'm saying is they might be the, weak, the ones that are weak in the faith, right? They're like, oh, I don't know, a tree would be bad. It would be pagan. You know, it would bring back uh, pagan memories or something like that. But just have some leniency, have some mercy on them. You know, the Lord's still working on them. You do what's right for you and for your family. And if you're in the um, leadership of the church, obviously do make decisions that are best for, for that church. And so uh, Hebrews 9, uh, 9 and 10 says this. It says that those things, uh, the, the ordinances, meats, uh, drinks, you know, all that kind of stuff, that these were a figure of things to come. All right, so... So we realize that that was fulfilled in Christ. I think we're all probably on the same mindset here. We're like, man, we got a lot of liberty in Christ. He doesn't expect us to do these things. And anybody that would make us do that, particularly like, you know, somebody that would make you, if you don't do that, you're going to hell. Obviously, they, that would be heresy, uh, damnable heresy for them to be teaching work salvation like that. 
But it's not wrong to decide that we're going to do something uh, for conscience sake, right? Again, when we were in, uh, we've been in different churches that had slightly different views on this, but my wife was raised uh, where women wear dresses, they wear skirts, you know, there's no exception to that. It doesn't matter, you're riding a horse or whatever you're doing, that's just, that's the way she was raised. Now, when Valor and I first met, you know, I was uh, 19, something like that, and I didn't have those standards. I'd go running, pair of shorts, nothing else, you know, on, didn't think anything of you, and, uh, and she was raised where that was bad, right? The guy needs to be covered too, and he needs to, and so, uh, and, and my, you know, my sister and my mom, they would wear pants sometimes, and all of a sudden it was like, whoa, we're going to be marrying each other, and we got these, you know, we're not even on the same, on the same, and I remember kind of thinking that was the weirdest thing, like, man, that's some strict standards, right? And, uh, and now here I am, Years later, I mean, partly probably because we're married and we talked these things out and everything, and then just growing in the Word of God and everything. Now, I have standards, right? But whenever I see someone doesn't have the standards I, that I have, I remember. Like, yeah, I remember. I remember I still loved the Lord. I was still serving the Lord. I needed somebody to show me and to teach me and to be patient with me, right? But in time, I grew to these convictions. It's not wrong to have convictions. And it's not wrong to have conviction. Somebody mentioned the other day, uh, okay, let me get back on this one. So uh, you guys probably know who I'm talking about, but there's a guy who didn't like the fact that uh, I required guys that would get up here to preach to wear a suit, right? He said, huh? Well, I, actually, I, yeah, I don't even require to wear a suit, just a, a slacks and a shirt and a tie. And I said, uh, that's the requirement before we started the ministry training and the preaching. And he was really offended by that, right? And he said, ah, what in the world is that all about? You know, what did John the Baptist wear? And I am thought, a hairy garment? I mean, is that what you <laughs> want us to wear? <clears throat> but here's the thing. That's different because it's okay for the pastor of a church to say, here's a guideline that we're going to have, right? So somebody mentioned, yeah, I remember there's a Baptist pastor, an independent fundamental Baptist pastor that said, you have to wear a white shirt. And if you wore a blue shirt or something like that, you were a sissy. You know, you have to wear, you know, uh, I've got a feeling that uh, Pastor Anderson wouldn't want me to ever preach there with a polka dot shirt. You know, that's just, that's, he's got a thing with polka dots, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, and I knew a guy that would, uh, uh, you know, pink shirts. I'd rather you not wear a pink shirt up to preach, but <laughs> there's a guy that, uh, uh, that, was, that I fellowship with. And he, was, he had that philosophy in his church. You have to wear a white shirt. It's conservative. If you don't wear a white shirt, you know, you're kind of going liberal. He changed that over the years, okay? But at the time, he had that thing. And I remember people saying, how, how could he do that? That's just so weird. Like, who would do that? Here's another thing is I've been to places where they wouldn't allow a guy to have a beard, right? At the Bible college that I went to, you weren't allowed to have a beard. And I remember a lot of people saying, that's so silly. Don't they know Jesus had a beard? And I'm thinking, well, I mean, you don't have to go to the college. And I don't think they're saying this is like a, doct a doctrinal thing. This is just a re prerequisite that they had, a standard that they had for the guys to wear. And there's nothing wrong with that. The pastor should be able to say, hey, this is what we're going to do in the church, right? And that's okay. As long as he's not teaching, you know, that you have to obey these things. And, and here's how you get it. I mean, some pastors in history, and I kid you not, have gone so far as to telling men how their wives can dress in the bedroom and <laughs> there's some weird stuff out there man yeah, a lot of missionaries got like uh these questionnaires and it's like stuff that's none of their business and they're asking like you know some real private things about their relationship with their wife and stuff like that and i'm like man that's none of your business now if you want to say hey i'm the pastor and anyone that's going to preach is going to have to abide by this standard or, I mean, even, even I, there's some churches that will not allow a lady to step in, inside with pants on. Like, get her out of here, it's an abomination to God. You know what? If that's that church's, you know, standard, I, I don't care. We're independent. You know, you can have that, you can have that standard. You know, I, if I don't like that and I don't want to go to the church, I won't go to the church. So there's a lot of different people that have different standards, and that's not bad. Do you know this, that... When it comes to Christmas, because I keep getting off track on more about convictions in general, but what I'm talking about mainly is the, the, the hol this holiday season. Do you know that there was a time when the Puritans in New England 
had banned Christmas. Like nobody could celebrate. In fact, it wasn't just Christmas. It was pretty much any holiday. You couldn't celebrate that. And they had different reasons for this. And uh, this was in starting in about 1659. And it went all the way up to about 1840. If you lived in that area that was run by the, uh, that state, uh, you know, the Puritan <laughs> government at that time, then uh, you could not. It was illegal to celebrate Christmas. And if you think about it, 1840 is whenever that stopped. In the 1840s, uh, Charles Dickens came out with the Christmas Carol, right? So you can think about Scrooge, the humbug, you know, and he didn't want to celebrate Christmas, and then they talked him into it in the end, whatever. But 1843, then uh, the Christmas traditions were starting to be embraced, and in 1870 it became declared a national holiday. But here are some of the reasons the Puritans, now you understand Puritan, they wanted to stay completely pure, right? And they didn't want to... Uh, uh, anyway, I won't get into all that because I don't know enough about, <laughs> about it. But the Puritans were like the ones, if you read the history books, like they were the complete wackos, right? They were like the independent fundamentals of, <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. They were the, the ones that were like, uh, uh, you know, the Salem witch trials and stuff like that. There was some weird, there was some weird stuff going on. Okay. <sighs> what in the world? Someone's been listening to me for two minutes. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> so anyway, the Puritans, uh, and there was actually a rising here recently of Puritan Baptists. Anybody ever heard of that? They really actually embraced a whole lot of this, uh, this stuff. But anyway, they're like super like uh, pious and like, you know, you, you got to do everything a certain way. And uh, so the Puritans back in this, during this time, here's what they said. They said, some of these practices that are going on, these Christmas traditions and what have you, are pagan. And so it's just wicked. And so we need to stop doing it. Then some of them said, hey, they're, they're keeping people because there are so many holidays people were celebrating all the time. And particularly the Catholic Church. Uh, the Catholic Church has what's called, uh, oh man, I don't think I wrote it down. Uh, let me see here. Holy Days of Obligation. Anybody familiar with that? Holy Days of Obligation. In other words, you have got to, unless you get permission from the priest or whatever, you've got to show up and have Mass on these particular days. One would be Sundays, uh, unless your work's... Now, they're real lenient on stuff, but, but somewhere down the line, the Pope said, this is going to be the deal. You have to observe on these days. And, uh, and then they... Uh, but it's like, well, it, it, you know, unless you can't, then, you know, just say so many Hail Marys or whatever, and I'll let you go. <laughs> So, uh, but this was like, these are the, rec the days that you have to come. Christmas time, there's a lot of, uh, day, you know, like Christmas Eve. Uh, that's a special day. I didn't know that. So we were putting, a, we were putting an ad in the paper because the Iola Register called and said, hey, are you doing anything for Christmas at your church? So, yeah, we're having candlelight service Christmas night. But apparently it's so common that Catholic and Protestant churches do a Christmas Eve mass that they just assume that, uh, that that's what we're doing. So they put in there, you know, Pastor Rocky Randall officiating and it's going to be Christmas Eve and all that. And people in our church were like, hey, we're not doing it Christmas Eve, are we? And so, but apparently that's the thing. Like you, this is a big deal. This is scheduled. And so the Puritans were watching like, man, they had all these scheduled holy days off. And here the business people, the, the businessmen are trying to make some money, but nobody's showing up to work because they got all these holidays. And so that was another reason. They were like, just forget these holidays. You know, they're, <laughs> they're keeping people idle. You know, people are partying and they're getting into trouble and they're doing all that. Get rid of that. And they said this too. They said, look, every day is a holy day. Right. Every day, if you're, a, if you're really belie a believer, then every day is a holy day. And they had this quote. It says, they for whom all days are holy can have no holiday. <laughs> right? Those are all days are holy. Right. So, you know, you just have to make all days holy, not just have a separate day that's a special day or whatever. So the Puritans really did that. And for many, many years, it was illegal to have uh, Christmas. Now, before that, Martin Luther, you know, a lot of Reformed people were big on Christmas. Martin Luther started a lot of the Christmas traditions from the Christian perspective that we, uh, uh, that we see today. Now look, there's really nothing new under the sun because every year people come out and say Christmas is a pagan time. 
You know, Christmas is all secular. Christmas is stopping people from doing, and they'll come out this time of year and they'll say that all these things are bad. And let me say this, there are certainly some things about Christmas as it's celebrated in the world that I can't stand. All the partying, I can't stand that. You know, all the, uh, the, the commercializing, the, the Santa Claus, the elf on the shelf, what in the world, who started that thing, right? And all these, uh, these just kind of weird traditions that have caught on. Uh, there's a lot of things that I don't like, but there's a lot of things about Christmas that I do like. And so, uh, so whereas we don't want to judge our fellow brother concerning meats, drinks, holy days, etc. I mean, I think we all can agree on that, right? We don't want to just judge them on, on, on things that they should have liberty on. But can I add this, that in some instances, it is right to judge. Do you agree with me? The Bible says a lot about judging. And I know we live in a world that says don't judge, but the Bible has a lot about what to judge. And what we judge is based on the Bible. Okay? So, let me just say two points here. Number one, this Yes, I believe in giving people liberty. I'm not a bah humbug. I'm not anti-Christmas. I'm not all that. But I will say this. I'm not wishing everyone happy holidays. I'm not going around wishing everybody happy holidays, okay? I studied, I tried to look out like what other things are called holidays this time of year. And first of all, just even seeing how the Catholics treat this time of year, and everything is just like so laid out. And you got the Advent and certain candles and, and, and all this. And, and, and look, the, uh, the Catholics, if they're holding on to what they believe, what they've been taught, right? They're not saved. Right. I don't know how I can knock on so many doors and have so many Catholics say to me, oh, yes, I know for sure I'm going to heaven. I have no doubt about it. And then you start asking them what someone has to do to go to heaven. You're like, how could one person in this world think that they deserve to go to heaven based on what that person just told me, you know? And so, you know, I was watching this thing where the guy said, yeah, before the, before the advent, you know, you got to go to mass and everything, but before you go to mass, you got to stop by the confession and you got to, uh, you know, tell the priest all your sin, your dirty secrets or whatever, and get that cleaned up. And then you got to do this. And I'm thinking, man, I don't want to encourage that. Like if I'm doing anything to encourage that this time of the year, I don't want to do it. I wish we could change the word Christmas, but what are you going to call it? <laughs> you know, you're going to call it the nativity, a Noel or something. I wish we could change the word Christmas because it means the Christ mass. And everybody knows that's, that's got a Catholic roots, right? The mass that they celebrate on Christmas Eve, taking the communion, which they believe is eating the body of Jesus. Like it turns into the Jesus's body in their in their mouth like it's they they want to like they got it you got to believe that if you're catholic like if you don't believe that you know that's a big big no-no for them <clears throat> i'm not going to do anything to endorse their celebrations so you know i think about this because because i always hear people say like i've got this this advent calendar or i've got and they start using all these terminology and i'm just i'm just gonna try everything i can not to use the terminology that the Catholics use, because I don't want to promote some of the things uh, that they're doing. Uh, yeah, they got like December 24th, they do a celebration, and that goes till like January 6th. I never knew this, 12 days of Christmas. I was always like, what is the 12 days of Christmas all about? That's a Catholic thing. And, and on the final day, it's like a, the epiphany on, uh, on January 6th, and they do all that. So, so this time of year, obviously, we celebrate Christmas. But that doesn't make us Catholic. And there's a lot of people that won't celebrate Christmas because they're like, well, it says Christ Mass, and I'm not Catholic, and I'm thinking, call it something else. But there's nothing wrong with, you know, you have the liberty to celebrate it. But, uh, but, I, but at the same time, I don't want to help somebody do something that's wicked. You say, okay, well, that's, that's uh, Catholic. What else goes on this time of year? Hanukkah. Anybody familiar with Hanukkah? Anybody know what it is or how it started? Uh, what's the tops all about? I don't even know. <laughs> right? what, is a, uh, what is a dreidel? I don't understand. But look at John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verse 22. <clears throat> and 
And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. So if you look that up, what is the feast of dedication? What's that talking about? That's actually talking about what today they call Hanukkah. No doubt it was celebrated quite a bit differently. But so what Hanukkah was, it is, it's the celebration of the second temple. Okay, so something happened, uh, you know, uh, in the Maccabean time, intertestamental time period, right? They were revolting. They were trying to, uh, uh, you know, the story about, uh, uh, what is his name? I said it this morning. Uh, Ant Antiochus Epiphanes. Something like that. And you know how he goes in and he's, he's sacrificing pigs on the altar and he's doing everything he can to offend the, the Jews, which at that time, Jews it didn't, didn't, it didn't mean what it means today to us, right? Because Christ hadn't come yet. And so he was doing this abomination, sacrificing the pig in the temple. And then eventually they destroyed the temple. You understand how all that happened. So somehow these Jews went back into the temple and they were wanting to dedicate it and to cleanse it and all that. And so apparently they found some kind of oil. And supposedly, miraculously, that little bit of oil that they found lasted eight days. And so they have eight days of a celebration, uh, this Hanukkah time. And they got the menorah, because that's what they were trying to relight, was the menorah in the, in the temple. And so they have this festival where they're celebrating that. And you know, there's actually Christians today that say, you know, we ought to be celebrating Hanukkah. Jesus celebrated Hanukkah. Did you see that in John chapter 10? We ought to be celebrating Hanukkah. There is no second temple even there anymore. And Jesus said, this temple is going to be destroyed. There's not going to be one stone left upon another. Right? And he did that for a good, good reason. And now you got guys, uh, you, got, uh, you got Jews who don't even believe in Jesus. They don't even accept him as the, as the Messiah. And they're worshiping this. And then you got Christians saying, hey, yeah, we ought to celebrate Hanukkah. It's crazy. It's crazy. I'm not going to wish somebody happy Hanukkah. And I'm not going to say happy holidays if it's including uh, this kind of stuff. So the, the, uh, the celebration of the dedication of the second temple doesn't make a lot of sense to me. <clears throat> so what else is celebrated this time of year? I had no idea. I, I had to research it, okay? Uh, every time you look, if you're going through the cards, right, this time of year, trying to find a Christmas card or whatever, yeah, here's the Hanukkah section. Here's Kwanzaa. Anybody know what Kwanzaa is? Kwanzaa is the African-American, basically, holiday. Uh, basically, it's a day in the 60s with the black power, you know, remember the Black Panthers and all that? I mean, I say remember, I wasn't alive. <laughs> but uh, in the 60s, it was real big, on the rise. Uh, civil rights movement, we understand. And so this guy started this. He was a leader in the, in the Black Power uh, movement. And he started this as a uh, replacement, basically, for Christmas. Now, later on, he accepted people. Uh, he, I mean, he allowed people that, believe, that still celebrated Christmas. They could still do Kwanzaa or whatever. He, he made exception for that. But the truth of the matter is he hated Jesus. He thought he was, a, he was psychotic. And he thought Christianity was a white man's religion. And it was his desire that everybody that was black would get back to their African pagan heathen roots, right? And they would do some different things celebrating that. So they've got this weird thing. It looks like, a, it looks like something Jewish. It's got candles. And the middle one is, is a brown candle. That represents uh, their people. And then you got uh, four, I think it is, three or four, I can't remember, green candles which separates, I mean, which, which has to do with like their, the future, their future is bright kind of thing. And then the other candles are red, which separate, which was, uh, represent their uh, sufferings, you know, bloodshed and all that stuff, slavery and all that. And so, so he, I mean, this guy was a flat out hater of Christ and he was trying to get people to get away from doing anything Christmas, Christian related, because Christianity was a white man's religion, and take them back to their African roots. And so really weird traditions that he started trying to make it work. It really didn't work that well. There's not that many people that celebrate it today, but it is out there, and everybody tries to in, be inclusive and add all that together, you know. Uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty weird. And then they even speak Swahili, which there's no way any of those guys' native tongue was ever Swahili, because that was the language that came many years later. 
but anyway, so it's, it's kind of weird, some of the celebrations that go on this time of year. And people don't want to offend anybody, so they say, well, happy holidays, you know, uh, seasons, greetings, or whatever. So <clears throat> number one is just simply, I am not going to uh, wish people happy holidays. Yes, I'm all for liberty and all that, but I'm not just going to help somebody to celebrate something that's wicked. Number two, what I'm going to do this time of year is try to find a way to worship and serve the Lord the best that I can. I don't have a problem with saying Merry Christmas because nobody, like I said, everyone knows the roots of it are Catholic, but no one thinks you're Catholic because you said Christmas. People all over the entire world say Christmas, right? And it's one of the few times that you can actually say the word Christ. And one of the few times you can actually have Christmas songs, uh, I mean, songs about Christ and you're singing them. And I say, go for it, you know? Uh, there's nothing wrong with singing, there's nothing wrong with singing Christmas carols that have good doctrine, and <laughs> singing those. There's nothing wrong with giving gifts and being happy. Giving gifts is something, even in the Bible, like that's the way people always celebrated things. There's nothing wrong with feasting, Maybe we don't need to feast quite as much. Maybe that at some point becomes a sin. But there's nothing wrong with feasting and enjoying that and having parties and, and, uh, and all. But I'm not going to decorate with things that I think are wicked. I'm not going to encourage. Uh, here's the other thing. Happy New Year, right? Well, I'm not against New Year. I like bringing in the New Year. I like, I don't know about you, I like planning the New Year. I never... I never get all my, uh, my plans accomplished, but I like sitting down with the chart and mapping it all out and saying, this is what I'm going to do. But you know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to say, Happy New Year. Be safe. Drive safely. Don't drink and drive. I'm going to say, don't drink at all. <laughs> right? But a lot of people, they just want to uh, be, be very secularized, very inclusive, and, uh, and, and just try to get along with everybody. I like uh, to use this season as an opportunity the singing, Christmas, Christmas caroling is great. We like to make gifts, and we go take them to our neighbor's doors, knock on it. We'll give them a card, an invitation with a gospel track. We'll try to talk to them. This year we didn't because it's kind of like they've caught on to the routine, but, uh, but one year tried to work on getting the gospel to them, like actually present the gospel to them. And then uh, we have a, a candlelight service on Wednesday, so we try to invite a lot of people to come. Sometimes they'll come to that. I like to, uh, to use this time of year as a great opportunity to, uh, to, to, to talk to people. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. If you're doing it to the glory of God, that's what the verses that we started with are saying. If your conscience is clear and what you're doing is a good motive and you're doing it for the Lord, let Him be the judge. You know, don't go around judging everybody else for that. Let the Lord be the judge. Now, it's been years since the big controversy where this... What in the world? Like, the, a demon's like possessing my phone. At least it was a church singing. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> so, it's been quite a while since the... In our nation, it became kind of a political thing. Like, I don't know if you remember that, but I remember I worked somewhere in retail, and they were trying to say, like, you know, hey, every time someone leaves the door, you can't say Merry Christmas. You have to say Happy Holidays or something like that. And I remember way back then saying, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say Merry Christmas. And I was willing to lose my job over it. Maybe it was silly, you know, not a big deal. But that's why I, I was like, no, I'm not going to budge and say Happy Holidays and, and whatever. And uh, presidents, now, come on. So I looked at Christmas cards going back for like 90 years for our presidents like that they actually issued from the White House. Christmas cards, right? Now, a lot of them, season's greetings, happy holidays. Now, there's some of them that said Merry Christmas. There was one that I read, and it looked really good. At first, I saw the word Savior jumped out at me. This was like way back, right? Uh, I wish I knew how many years, but this was like one of the earlier ones. And I said, oh, man, this one actually talks about the Savior. And I read it. And you know what it said? It said, uh, it said Christmas isn't a day. It's a state of mind. And it says, and if you uh, will think this way, you will find a Savior in yourself or something like that. I'm like, way back where I would have thought that's when they actually would have talked about, you know, Christ or something. 
our government's always been humanist, by the way, in case you didn't know. And so they, uh, so, uh, but anyway, I would expect that from our government. Our government is always going to be catering to trying to make everybody happy, being all inclusive, you know, you know, gay pride day and all that stuff. They, I mean, our government really has no right moral stands on that kind of stuff. I would expect that. I would expect maybe a business to say, well, we don't want to lose any customers or whatever. So we got to be careful what we say. But a born again Christian. Yes. Enjoy liberty. Yes. Don't judge people, you know, in the way that they worship the Lord. But if they're worshiping a false God, or if they're partying and they're, and they're doing something that is, that is actually sinful, don't be accepting of that and be like, oh, well, can't say anything, can't say anything bad, bad to them. So let me close with 2 John. Uh, 2 John chapter 1. So if you celebrate this time of year, enjoy yourself. But do right and honor the Lord the best you can and don't... Uh, don't just give in to some of the wickedness that's out there. Second John chapter 1, verse 7 says this, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. That be your Jews. I'm not going to celebrate Hanukkah. They, don't conf they, conf they, don't they confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Amen. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whoso transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. We're Christians, right? Our job is not to just, just hold hands with and accept the world. Our job is to convert the world, okay? So I'm not going to hold hands and say happy holidays to the Jews, to the Catholics, uh, you know. But as far as my Christian brothers, I'm going to allow them some liberty, Right, to not believe 100% like I do and celebrate everything exactly the way that I do. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you will uh, help us this time of year uh, to do what is honoring, pleasing in your sight. And not just this time of year. I know um, that was my main focus. Uh, but Lord, I, uh, I, I recognize that this is something that we need to consider in all of, our, all of the stands that we take. We want to be as close to your word as we can get. Uh, we want to stand strong and to be separate where we need to be separated. But Lord, help us to realize that not everybody's in the same place and, uh, and help us to give liberty where we need to allow liberty and let you be the judge and help us take strong stands where we need to take strong, strong stands and call out sin and wickedness where we need to call it out. I pray you be honored and glorified with all that goes on uh, here with this group. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.